Okay, all right, what you're looking at right here is my methods, my processes. Okay, right here, this is a big bag of rust, okay? Iron oxide, okay? That's exactly what it is, it's five pounds of iron oxide. Uh, if anybody's interested in it, just uh, send me an email and I can send you a small bag of uh, iron oxide because a little bit goes a long way. Um, and it will stain really big time. When you're using it with oil, you basically just created red pigment, oil-based paint is what you did. And it will penetrate everything and anything for several days, especially your skin, okay? Here is what I call, well, what everybody calls, it's called magnetite, okay? It's just scale off of the steel when I forge it, okay? So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll pulverize this and turn it into, or try to turn it into as fine a powder as I possibly can, okay? And then I'll mix that with oil as well. The basic process of what I'm basically getting at here is called Nagoya, okay? And what it is is you're taking mineral oil, okay? Clove oil, everybody wants to use clove oil, but really to tell you the truth, clove oil is mineral oil, okay? All the Japanese did was just add clove to it to add some kind of fragrance or whatever it is to the oil, but it, it is basically just mineral oil. You add bits and pieces of the, of the iron oxide to the oil, and you make a nice little paste, you rub it on your blade, and it turns the softer steel darker than the harder steel, which gives you a, a basic contrast between hard edge and soft steel. Okay, so where your hammond's at should be nice and white, and then you have your hardened edge, and then you have your soft spine, okay? So that's what these three things I use for, okay? Now, I do etching, okay? I etch my blades, okay? If I want, I don't have Hazoya and Jazoya stones that the Japanese use to bring out the, the hammond on their blades and to whiten them. So basically what I do is as I'm polishing my blade, okay? As I'm polishing, once I get to the 800 grit polish, I'll do a dip into ferric chloride. So I mix one part ferric chloride to four parts water, okay? And I have my little contraptions over here that uh, I dip my, uh, my blades into. It's basically a six inch piece of PVC pipe with uh, two end caps put on it, and then I just cut it right down the middle and created two halves, okay? One for vinegar and one for ferric chloride, all right? Um, ferric chloride is, is very dangerous. Okay, it's a, it's an etching. It's a PCB board etching. Okay, it's used for etching uh, computer component boards. It's very dangerous. It's ferric chloride. Um, so when you have it, please be very careful with it. Keep it away from children and kids. Uh, keep it in a secure area. I keep it in my shop and I keep it locked away. Okay. Now a uh, not so dangerous method is lemon juice. 100% uh, from concentrate or however you want to do it. Uh, just plain old lemon juice, okay? You would, what, I, what I've heard, um, Walter Sorrells uh, uses lemon juice, I believe, at this point. And uh, he basically heats his, I believe he heats his blade um, and then takes a, uh, either a paper towel and dabs it in, or cotton, or a big cotton ball, and dabs it in the uh, lemon juice and rubs it on the hammock and, uh, and it slowly will start to etch the blade, okay? It's, it does the same thing as a ferric chloride. Um, the only difference is, is this is safer. I, I wouldn't consider it safe after you've used it. Uh, me, personally, I've tried heating the lemon juice and keeping the blade in a pan of boiling water or very, very hot water and pull it out only when I need to do the etching on the blade. Um, I find that a warm blade and warm uh, lemon juice actually cuts better, etches faster. So experiment, that's what I had to do. I had to experiment because you know when you heat an acid, it has a tendency to function faster. If anybody remembers their chemistry, uh, hot acids, hot metals, or however you want to do it, an acid actually, I believe it multiplies in its uh, destructive nature. Now, once I've used either one of these two, which I prefer to use the ferric chloride. Uh, I, I dip into the ferric chloride, depending on how strong I want the demarcation. If, if I'm just polishing and I'm starting at 800 and dipping, I'm just doing quick dips for like 30 seconds into the ferric chloride. And then I take it out 
I spray it off with um, Windex. I have a bottle of Windex over here. Just plain old glass plus is what I use. Plain old glass plus. You spray that on the blade on both sides after you have dipped it in the ferric chloride. You take it out of the ferric chloride, I stand over a small little bucket of water and I spray the blade down with the Windex. What it is is the ammonia neutralizes the acidic nature of the ferric chloride. It neutralizes it. Okay, It's kind of like using baking soda, except I don't have baking soda, so I use Windex. Then I wipe the blade off, get it dry. Okay, Now on the blade, your blade is going to turn black when you're uh, dipping it in the, the acid etchants. It's going to turn black. It's going to have oxidation on it. And it's going to oxidize on the hard steel, which which I find to be very peculiar because the etching only affects the hardened steel. Okay, It doesn't really affect the soft steel as much as it does the hardened steel. Um, there might be some people out there who might refute this who might know more about the chemical compounds and, and breakdowns of what the etchants do, but I personally, through my personal experience, have never seen the, the ferric chloride etch the soft steel. It only goes after the hardened steel. All right, now when I'm done with that, I've used several different products in the past, and uh, I've used flits, I've used um, uh, semi-chrome and stuff like that, but I, one day I ran out, you know, and I don't have the, the money to go and spend on these little tubes, so I went to Walmart and I picked up rubbing compound. It's the same thing. It's actually a little bit finer grit, and it removes the, uh, the, the oxidation from the blade really nice, and it leaves a nice finish on the steel. Okay, it does. And when you rub it enough, it leaves a very nice finish on the steel. just depends on what you want. Now, if you want to, uh, to go one step further once you've done all that, I use pumice. I use the most finest pumice out there, and I use it and I dab it on the blade after I've done all my etching and my rubbing compounds and I wipe off the blade with the pumice. Uh, what that does is that cleans all the oils, gets all the residue, gets everything off the blade, gets the blade clean and looks really sharp. Okay, so now you basically know the process that I use to get to the level that I have. Now, like I said, as I polish and etch, you know, I will etch or I'll polish get it to 800, and then I'll etch, and I'll take it out, I'll clean it up, and then I'll polish again, and then I'll etch, and then I'll polish again, and then I'll etch, and I'll polish again. And as I'm polishing, I'm going progressively to finer grit, and I'll end up with a beautiful Hammond with a nice whitish border with a very nice contrast between the blade. And the very final step that I do will be the Nagoya, okay? I'll use Nagoya to, to uh, turn the blade a darker, turn the soft seal darker, than what I want. Now, between the, the scale and iron oxide, you can tell there's an obvious difference. One is black and one is, is in red. Okay, you'll get a different result with each one. Okay, so just experiment with what you're doing. Um, but as always, I, I can't stress enough to please be careful with the acid etching. Whether it's lemon juice or ferric chloride, you still got to be careful. Okay, because lemon juice in the eye is not pleasant. Been there, done that. So, uh, just keep in mind that they are both acids. One's a natural acid and one's a man-made acid. Okay? Always keep the Windex handy because you never know when you need to douse something with it. So, uh, I hope this explains in some detail about my process and everything that I do. Okay? So, if you have any questions, you can visit my website, www.smith-forge.org and contact me through my website or you can be go to YouTube and my username is Smith Forge and you can uh, and contact me that way if you have any questions about my process. Um, once again my process is not perfect it is not by no means uh, the, the, the cure-all for polishing a blade but it has produced very good results for me it's given me what I want what I feel is uh, is the best results. There are people out there who have even better results. If I'm not mistaken, Walter Sorrells actually sells videos on his processes alone, his hybrid polishing, his uh, heat treating and, and forging and stuff like that. So you might want to look him up and, uh, and check out his videos as well.